my name's Alan Parry and I'm currently uh, training to be a psychotherapist so I thought what I'd do, I'd show you a really important concept in psychotherapy that relates to human relationships and in particular um, the games that we play with each other, not the fun games like this but the, the kind of more bad games that we play relationship wise and I just want to kind of open up those processes, show you what our role in them is so that hopefully we can spot it when we get there and, and step back from it. Um, in particular, uh, I'm going to be looking at something called the Drama Triangle, as we just said, that's the tool I'm going to use. It's called that because it's dramatic when you're on it, and there's three potential roles that we play, the rescuer, the persecutor, and the victim. When I say victim, I don't mean a real victim, like someone who's been a victim of a crime, I mean this kind of victim. You know, psychologically speaking, someone who is discounting their own value, their own ability, and is presenting themselves to the world as helpless and hopeless which is a great invite to the next role on the drama triangle, which is the rescuer. Now, the rescuers, they love going around saving people. They often save people who don't even want to be saved. And psychologically, they're driven by a real need to be needed. And then you've got the third element on the drama triangle, which is the persecutor. <laughs> a little bit of politics there. And anyone in the persecutor role is pointing the finger, they're blaming, they're shouting at people, and generally acting persecutory. So knowing the three roles, the, the question really to ask of all of you is which one are you on the drama triangle? Are you a persecutor, are you a victim, or are you a rescuer? And as you're pondering that, I'm going to help you out and tell you that it's actually a trick question. Because the reality of it is that we're all three. We'll certainly have a favourite starting position on the drama triangle, but as the drama evolves, we'll tend to touch at least two and usually all three of them. When I'm going to show you some examples of this, I want you to watch out for what I call the victim switch. Because you'll generally have two people, one of them starts as the victim, and the other one will end up as the victim. So the first example, you've got a, a guy, you'll see him in a second, in his office, and he's got a stack of stuff to do, and he's got a report, and he'll whine, and he'll say, I can't do this report. And the persecutor will respond by saying something like, God, you're such an idiot. Why did he even employ you? You're useless. And this dynamic carries on between them until eventually we'll have the switch. And the victim will bite back and say, How dare you talk to me like that? What about your report from last week? That was an absolute joke. And you can see that the persecutor has become the victim. And now the victim is the persecutor. Another example, you've got someone here with the, uh, making themselves some beans on toast and they say, I can't do this beans on toast, it's too hard for me. Now the rescuer loves that, dives in, saves the day, you sit down, I'll take care of everything. But what happens often is that the victim in that situation starts to resent their interference and even moans about what they do. So they'll say, oh, hey, these beans are too cold, you've ruined me tea, what did you do that for? And so again you see that switch. The, the victim starts off here, goes to persecutor, and then back again. This is from the TV show Sorry, just to show that it's not only victims who start the game. Your classic smother mother will be rescuing him without him wanting to. Put your coat on properly, you'll catch your death a cold. Let's fix your collar for you. Until Timothy there will hit back and say, Will you leave me alone, mother? I'm a grown man at 40 years of age. And again, you see the victim is actually changed. One goes to persecutor, and the rescuer comes back. What that leaves everybody with is this sense of, what is it that just happened? <laughs> Little visual football joke there. Um, but everyone is feeling sad, everyone is feeling bad, everyone's feeling really confused. So how do we get out of this? Well, the common feature in the drama triangle in these sort of relationships is that you've got a one-up, one-down relationship. You can see that the persecutor is definitely a one-off relationship, but so too is the rescuer, because the rescuer is basically saying, you're not capable, so I'd best do it for you. The other thing is that nobody's taking responsibility for themselves. The victim is just seeking to be saved, the persecutor is blaming everyone, and even the rescuer isn't taking responsibility for themselves, they're too busy taking responsibility for everyone else. So the answer to this is to insist on equal relationships where we do support each other, sure, but we do it from a position where the power is left where it belongs. Nobody gives their power away, nobody takes power from somebody else. So what you're left with is a situation where nobody's one up, nobody's one down, and we're able to break that horrible cycle where you're either a victim or you're waiting to become a victim, 
and then we have relationships which are happy, healthy and crucially drama free. Thanks very much.